What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and after running out of disk space for the recording, along with muting the microphone, this will be the third time that we've recorded this particular video. Today, we're going to be covering the new mining specific GPU from Sapphire called the G Pro X060. This one's interesting because it's based on RDNA 2. However, it does come with a display port and an HDMI port, so you aren't getting that typical mining specific GPU of no support for for basically other tasks, whether that be gaming and so on. So it's a little odd. We're gonna be covering, of course, the specifications. We're looking at cut down core clocks, which is part of the way it's for mining. Unfortunately, there are newer algorithms that do benefit off of the core clock and we'll see if it's impacted pretty significantly on there or not. Before we get into it, let's talk about today's sponsor. Wait, it's gonna be me. Now, this shirt has some pit stains now because we are three recordings in. We are mining with two GPUs back there, and it's hot. I know, it's January. It shouldn't be hot. But let me demo the shirt for you. I made the design myself, and I hope you pick it up. So it's keep calm, mine on. Of course, right now with the bear market and everything that's going on, mining profits are down, but you should m remind yourself to stay calm and mine on. You can purchase it by clicking the link to Teespring down below the video. And we are working on a black version that will have the white version, I guess, of the art or whatever you want to call it. I made it myself in Inkscape. Let's go ahead and get into the specifications for the GPU. Now, interestingly enough, this GPU is not listed on the official Sapphire website, probably because they don't want to get in trouble with the gaming mob. But let's go ahead and take a look at the specifications. We are looking at the brand Sapphire. The GPU is the Navi 23XL with 1,792 stream processors, 28 compute units, 16 gigabit per second memory clock, and an eight gigabyte frame buffer of GDDR6 across a 128-bit bus. The bus interface is going to be PCI Express 4.0. We are currently testing it through a by one riser. So basically it should translate itself into what you would expect in a mining rig. We uh, are we are looking at a, a dual fan design and a two slot form factor. So it should fit in the traditional mining rig frames as opposed to a lot of the newer GPUs. They're a lot thicker. Um, that's what he said. All right. So this one does support Windows 10, Windows 11, and Linux. The reason I mention this is because the Big Daddy version, the 080, does not support Windows. So this one's a little bit of an outlier. Let's get into the fun part, which is going to be, of course, the hash rates and power consumptions. We're gonna to start today off, of course, with Ethereum, because that is everybody's most profitable, most favorite coin to mine with a GPU. That being said, of course, we do have to worry about it going to proof of stake in June. So because of that, we are covering other algorithms as well. While I am adding Kryptonite GPU into the testing suite, this will not be reported in this video. We will be talking about specifically that algorithm on multiple GPUs here later on. So taking a look at Ethereum, we're able to get the core clock down to 1150 megahertz, which reports 62 watts in the software. Of course, once we get that out to the kilowatt, it is much higher. The setup for the power testing on this particular rig is going to be everything isolated to the GPU. So a 750 watt gold rated power supply that is powering the riser and the GPU itself, meaning that it should stay under 50% usage at all times, meaning we should get maximum efficiency of 84% and that is going to report 90 watts at the wall for the kilowatt. 
The reason this is important, of course, is because that is actually what you're going to be paying in power. Now you can improve these numbers by upgrading to platinum rated power supplies. I recommend Parallel Miner to source, of course, server power supplies with breakout boards to get the most efficiency out of your mining rigs. That being said, what that nets us after we also overclocked the memory to 1900 megahertz is easily over 29 mega hash a second. So we're looking at about like 29.3, somewhere in there on average. And that is pretty much on par with the RX 6600, which is what this card is reported as in Windows. So if you are basically looking at purchasing a 6600 for versus a G Pro 060, then you're probably either going to be buying based on price or resaleability with the resaleability probably going towards the 6600 because you'll be reselling to gamers in theory. That being said, the display outs here do make sense. Nothing really changes across the board as far as the performance goes, uh, as opposed to the RX 6600, but we will cover them. If we take a look at Ergo, we pretty much get the same results from overclocking as we do on Ethereum, meaning that we turn the core clock down to 1150 megahertz, which results in 59 watts reported in the software and 90 watts reported at the wall with the VRAM overclocked to 1900 megahertz. Next, we have Firo. Now, Firo is one that a lot of people are looking at moving Polaris and RX 5000 series GPUs off of, not necessarily uh, RX 6000 series because there are better options for that, including things like Flux. That being said, we were able to not tune the core clock down that much but we did overclock the memory for some increased hash rate. This did result in 99 watts at the wall, which was or 99 watts reported in software, which was 120 watts at the wall, resulting in 14.7 mega hash a second. This basically continues through Kapow. So both of these algorithms perform pretty much exactly the same, meaning that for Ravencoin on this GPU, you're looking at 14.7 mega hash a second at 120 watts. We also took a look at Flux and Flux along with one other algorithm basically has the highest power consumption. What you're gonna look at here for Zell hash is going to be basically not being able to turn the core clock down without losing mining performance, but still being able to overclock the VRAM for increased mining performance, resulting in 120 watts at the wall. Of course, if we turn the power limit up, which is as you can see in the software, it does increase the hash rate. That's why it's turned up, which is also why the power consumption is higher. It's 120 watts in the software and about 140 watts from the wall. What this means is we are resulting in 26.6 solutions a second on flux. Now we did take a look at Ton. Ton's kind of one of these outliers that you need to be aware of is going to run out of mining within the next 120 days or so. So it's not a long-term mining solution, but it is turning out to be one of the most profitable for RX 6000 and RTX 3000 series GPUs. So we will look at it. It's very, very similar, if not identical to Flux, except for one factor, which is it doesn't need the VRAM overclocked at all. That will result, of course, in the 120 watts in the software reported with 140 watts at the wall, but it does result in 1.8 giga hash a second on Ton, which is pretty respectable and actually much better than what I'm getting from my RX 6600s. I say much better, 100 mega hash better. We're getting 1.7 out of our 6600s in Hive OS right now. So interestingly enough, even though it technically has the cut down core clock, it is performing better on a core focused algorithm. What it appears to be, from the best I can tell, and I'll try to do more deep dives, is the clock speed is pretty much completely locked at that 2476 megahertz. While if we hop over to the RX 6600s, they fluctuate more and they are more likely to go down to that 2350, probably because 
for gaming, you really only need to hit those peaks for core clock every once in a while. And you're pushing the GPU a lot harder. All right, let's take a look at vert hash. Now for vert hash, this one is going to essentially have the same overclock settings as Ethereum and Ergo. So we're looking at 1150 megahertz on the core with 1900 megahertz on the memory. This will result in 58 watts reported in the software with 90 watts at the wall. Now let's go ahead and talk about the hash rate that's going to be 462 kilo hash a second that translates into 0.46 mega hash a second let's look at what to mine for the results and profitability keeping in mind of course profitability is an ever moving mark and so you will have to replug in these numbers on the day that you decide to do it we have the cost at 10 cents a kilowatt hour for power and Ethereum comes out to $1.14 a day after power with Firo coming in second at $0.64 cents a day after power. Ravencoin coming in third with $0.56 cents a day after power. Flux coming in fourth with 51% or with 51 cents a day after power. And then Ethereum Classic actually on the ET hash is beating out Ergo, which is the Auto Lycos at 49 cents a day after power. If we took a look at the open network, which is TON at 1.8 giga hash a second, you're going to be seeing a result of $1.37 a day after power. Meaning that, of course, right now on this particular GPU, TON, the open network, is the most profitable currently out. So there's my review for the Sapphire G Pro X060 mining specific GPU. From my perspective, what you are looking at here is essentially going to be an RX 6600 marked as mining specific, making it harder to resell potentially. Now a test that I'm going to be doing, and typically we don't do these anymore, is going to be gaming testing on this versus the RX 6600. Reason being is this is a mining channel and we are interested in resaleability. Seeing that this has display outs, what is the mining performance? How close is it to the RX 6600? And does it justify a similar price point on the resale market to gamers? I'm actually super curious about that. If you are too, hit the notification and the subscription bell and all of that stuff so you'll be notified at the end of the day when it comes out. Another note about this GPU is they are currently available for under 600 US dollars on AAA Wave. And that is where I got this particular model. There appears to be 60 more in stock and they are more plentiful than, of course, the 6600s. That being said, the 6600s, when they're getting released, are cheaper between 429 and 520, while these are listed at like 569. So if you need immediate rig building, these are something to consider if you're just trying to expand as quickly as possible. But if you're being as frugal as possible, then you're going to wait and try to pick up these cheaper RX 6600s on Newegg and Best Buy and others retailers. Those are also going to be limited by one, whereas you could just go here and buy all 62 and be done. Thanks for watching. Be sure to put a like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.